Hey folks, and welcome to this video on how to use pivot tables in Google Sheets. If you've got a table of data like this, it can be quite difficult to try and isolate certain pieces of information, such as all the different countries and what products were sold to those countries and how much profit was made. You could use filters along the top here to try and figure this information out, or you could use a pivot table. Pivot tables allow you to break down the information into a easy digestible table like this, where we can isolate just the countries in this case and the products along the top here. And in our case, we're looking at the profits for those particular products and countries. So with that said, let's dive in and take a look at how that's done. Okay, if you were to use formulas to break down this information, then it could be quite complex, although it's entirely possible. You can see here this top table has all the cells that have a color highlighted here contain formula. So this particular formula is looking in the, in the data sheet here for all the countries. And essentially what we're doing is we're just capturing all those countries and just sorting them and, and getting the unique values in this particular column here. And then the same is true for all the products. And then I'm using a sum if function to try and capture all that information. You could go one step further and use a query, the Google query function here. And this, this whole table is created using this one single query here. So this is one way of doing it, but of course you need to know how to use the query function in order to get to that point. So the easiest way is actually to use a pivot table. And as I showed earlier on, this is the result you get. And you can see that the result is exactly the same as using a formula like this with the sum ifs or with the query function. And the great thing is, is you can create these charts from a pivot table to get insights into what's happening with your data. Okay, so let's jump back to this data table here. So to create a pivot table, you can just put your cursor anywhere within the table itself. You do want to make sure that the heading row is attached to the data. If there's a space between the data and the heading row, then that could be a problem. So you want to make sure that these two are sitting next to one another. So with any cell selected, come up to insert and come down to pivot table here. You get two options. You can either enter this into a new sheet and it will create a separate tab down the bottom for us, or we can choose where we want to put it within our sheet. Usually I'll just go for the new sheet and we'll do that this time. So let's go create. And you can see the data range that it's collecting up here. So that's from A1 all the way through to J30 down here. Once that's created, it opens another tab at the bottom here and we get a blank pivot table with the rows down the left, the columns along the top here, and then the values in the middle. You can see the, the range at the top here again. That's where this pivot table is collecting its data from, and you can change that by clicking this here. Google does offer some suggestions that you could use. It's worth checking those out. Sometimes it gets it right, but generally speaking, you probably want to build your own pivot table. The pivot table editor has these four elements, rows, columns, values, and filters. We're going to use rows to put information in here, columns, and then the values in the middle. And the filters can be used to just isolate certain pieces of information. On the right-hand side over here, these are the column headings. So you can see here, date, year, segment. Those are all of these column headings along here. So let's take the example I showed you. Let's choose the country for our rows. When that's selected here, you can see the country gets put down on the left hand side. Now you can drag these across over here as well. So let's drag the products on the top for columns. So we just grab the product, click it and drag it into this area for columns here. And there we go. Our products are along the top with a grand total as well. You can switch these grand totals off. You can see that switched the bottom one off there or the one on the end here for products. And now all we need to complete this table is the values in the middle. This is useful because you can just drop in different values um, depending on what it is you're trying to establish. Obviously, you know, you need to include something in here that has a value. So for example, if we jump back over here, any of these columns here would work because they have values. I mean, dates wouldn't be used in a case like this, but you know, so we can check the number of units that were sold or the sale price or the manufacturing price, that type of thing, um, or the profit. So let's have a look at the units sold. And we'll pop that in the values section down here. And so we can see there immediately how many items have been sold to different countries broken down by product. And you get your grand total at the, at the end here. Okay, so onto filters. With a filter, we can add, for example, let's say the country. And in here, we could isolate 
or remove certain countries. And when we untick these and click OK, they get removed from the country set over here. So we're left just with the countries we want to see. We'll take that out for now, we don't need that. Okay, so then we also have this order and sort by functionality in within each of these sections as well. And what that does is you can order the data ascending or descending. In this case, it's sorted by country. So you can see it's in ascending order right now. If we was to sort this by sum of units sold, that is collecting the data from our values down here. So if I choose by grand total, you could choose any product if you wanted to in our case, but we'll choose grand total. So this is the sum of all the units sold. That's this one here. What's happening is we're sorting this in ascending order of all the products sold. So Canada, you can see sold the most products there. You could change that to descending. So that's at the top and a similar sort of affair for the columns here as well. So we could sort by the units sold again and by grand total. And you can see here that that is currently ascending. So this is going from the smallest up to the largest here. So let's just show you how quick it is to just switch something out. So this is the unit sold. If we get rid of that and put the profit in here, everything else remains the same. We will need to change the sort by in these again now. But you can see with just a few clicks, how easy it is to just dive into the data that you need. When you close the pivot table, you can bring that back up again, all the while the cursor is within the table. If I click away from here, you can see the edit button disappears. But all the while the cursor is in the table or you hover over it, you get this edit button and that brings this window back up so you can change things around. And as I said, once you have your pivot table like this, you can create the charts that you need in order to get the insights from that data. And it's much easier than if you was to try and look at this large table and try and figure out which product was selling the best, how much profit we was getting from each country respectively. By using pivot tables, you can dive into that information within a few minutes. And what I tend to find is that I use pivot tables to get a preliminary insight into the data to figure out where the, uh, where the key pieces of information might lie. Once I've figured that out, then what I do is I create the, the same table using formulas because there's a downside to pivot tables. And let me show you what that is right now. So if we jump back to our pivot table here, you remember that this was our data set and this goes down to J30. Now, if we come down here and we just pick a random line and add it at the bottom here, going back to our pivot table, this doesn't change. If I close this and open it up again, you'll see it's, it's still J30. If I want that last row to be included that I've just added here, I need to come in here and change this manually, you know, which is entirely possible, but it's not, it's not dynamic. And so if your data is being imported into this sheet automatically and, and rows are being added all the time, then your pivot table won't update with that new data. And so that is why I tend to like using pivot tables initially to get the idea of what it is that I'm looking to achieve. And once I can see this is how I want to lay the data out, then I'll replicate that using formula. And I generally do use the query function an awful lot because it's so powerful. You can see that you can generate something like this from one single formula. But again, it is possible with multiple different scenarios. You know, in this case, this is a sum if scenario, but formulas do allow more flexibility from that point of view. But in terms of changing things around, once you've created a table with formula, it does require a bit more work. So that's just something to bear in mind. What's your thoughts? Do you feel that you'd want to use pivot tables or do you like the formulas? Or maybe you like a combination of both like me. Put your comments down below. It'd be interesting to see what you think. I hope you liked that video, guys. If you did, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. Thanks for watching, folks.